Hello. With Valentine's Day coming up, I thought it would be a nice gesture to make my wife a piece of jewellery. Uh, we kind of like modern design jewellery, and I thought, I have a machine shop. I should be able to make this sort of stuff. Obviously, uh, I've not done anything with gold or silver, so I've gone with brass, aluminium, aluminium, and some steel. Uh, this, I think, is going to be a prototype. I'm going to remake this. Um, I didn't film this because I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. I'll bring you in closer to have a look. Um, but it turned out pretty good, and I think I can make a, a, a slightly better version. So let me bring you in closer and show you what I'm working on. So what we have here is a, a square of aluminium um, that I cut down from a piece of stock. I bought it out for a press fit for this brass ring. There's an inner brass tube here that uh, can rotate. And it's held with this little stainless steel pin with a hole through it that um, goes on to the necklace itself. Should probably get it that way so the necklace can... Kitties. Anyway, um, this is, is pretty good. Uh, a couple of things I don't like about it is when I bored out for this press fit, I slightly made the opening of the hole a little bit bigger so I could start it. And so if I bring you in close, you can see a gap here, whereas on the back, um, there's no gap. Uh, when I cut this piece off the larger block, um, I just eyeballed and I thought I was behind the part where um, I had the slightly larger bore, um, but I missed it a little bit. So the back side, or I guess you could call it the front side, looks better. I'm scratching it up with my scale. Um, and so I think if I just cut another slice off my, my section, uh, it'll look better. The other thing I'm not a fan of is I don't like the ratio of the thickness of the aluminium on the outside compared to this brass ring here. I think I could thin that back a little bit and make those two dimensions the same. I think it'll look a little bit more balanced. Uh, making this little steel pin, uh, this was my second attempt with this long thin section out here. It's not quite a toothpick, um, but I had a lot of deflection um, when I was trying to cut that and uh, it was hard to get it to dimension. So I ended up cutting it sort of oversized and using a file to bring it down. The intention was for a slip fit in this hole, which I've got, um, but a press fit into the hole in this. So I have a cat and a dog in here, so it's probably a bit loud in the background. That's not quite a press fit. Um, it is if I push it back further. Um, but the end, I sort of rolled it over with the file, so it sticks out a little bit. I'm not too worried about that, but I think I can remake this uh, pin piece, and, and definitely if I remake this with uh, this section over here being shorter on aluminium, uh, the pin's going to need to be shorter as well, which means less deflection and hopefully uh, a better tolerance on that fit. The other thing um, that I don't love about this uh, is when I uh, made this piece, it's pretty simple, I just chopped a section of pipe off, um, I drilled the hole afterwards and the pipe deflected, I also did not hit a centre there very well. Um, I eyeballed it, whereas everything else I, I used edge finders. Um, I think I can do that better. Um, but I think visually it looks pretty cool. I think uh, no one will notice uh, the things I'm noticing, but it can be better. Oh yeah, the other thing about this is by drilling the hole afterwards, um, when I was clamping it, it pushed down a bit, so this is slightly out of round. Um, it's not super easy to tell when it's by itself, but when it's up in here, It's not perfectly symmetrical, as you can see. So, you know, um, I think this is a good start. I'll uh, see if I can get going on this again. This is the, the block of aluminium that I cut down to size um, and press fit the brass ring in. You can see from this surface finish here, I cut it with my new cold saw. Um, I kind of like that surface finish, but uh, I've been spending a lot of time sanding this and I'm going to end up polishing it, and so I think I'll go with a polished finish. Anyway, I'm going to chuck this up on the lathe. Actually, no, first I'm going to uh, get this uh, in back in the mill and cut these four sides down so it better matches the thickness of the brass ring. And I'll get it up on the mill, slice the section off, and uh, get back to it. As pretty as I think the cold saw cut surface is, 
Um, it's, it's, I spent a lot of time sanding down the other one, working from 80 grit. It took a long time at 80 grit just to get that flat all the way up to uh, 1,000 grit. Um, so I'm going to start off by um, just facing this off. Uh, I guess I could do that in the lathe, but I've got it in the mill now. So I'll do it in the mill, and then I'll bring the sides down to the right size. Okay, that surface is uh, now cleaned up. It actually took uh, like 27 thou to clean that up. Um, one thing you'll probably notice is that my mill is out of tram, so this is not straight, so it was cutting more on you know, the front edge versus the back edge. All right, so uh, this brass ring in here uh, is... Uh, 67 thou. This currently measures 195 thou, so 2 times 67 is like 134. Um, so we need to take off about 60 thou off each face. You'll notice I'm not like super worried about it being fully square. It's going to be a very thin section that we're cutting off, and it's jewellery. It's not super precise. No one's going to be measuring it down to the nearest thou. All right, let's touch off and uh, take off, I guess, two passes of 30. All right, we're at 195 thou. We want to get to 135. <coughs> so I just took a two thou cut. All right. Let's start with 30 thou and see how that goes. All right, 163. So I think another pass of 30 and we're good. Hundred and thirty six point five. You can't see that I don't think, but um I was shooting for hundred and thirty five. That is perfectly good enough for me. So um I'll flip this out and do the other couple of sides and meet you on over at the lathe. So I mainly keep my four jaw on the lathe. Um, I very rarely actually need the four jaw per se. Um, the three jaw would be fine for most of the stuff that I do, but I like keeping it on here because it's good practice. I saw Quinn from Blondie Hacks saying that she does the same thing and said, oh, it makes it when you really need to use it and dial things in, um, it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, but I had to take it off because uh, the stainless rod that I was turning too small for my four jaw. So, okay, put it back on, got the four sides uh, trimmed down here. I think it looks a lot nicer. Um, let's get this guy chucked up. I'm only just parting this guy off, so it doesn't need to be super centered, but practice, you know? Practice is good.
Okay, so I was going to part this off on here, but I just feel nervous about cutting such a thin slice off a square like this. Um, I just worried about the forces. I was doing it on here. I was trying to do it on here um, because I wanted a cleaner surface than I got from the cold saw. But um, I think I'm going to cold saw this off and uh, go from there. Oh, it's really going to be holding on by the edge. That was not clever. Hmm. This table is slightly elevated above there. This is not the best work holding. I just watched the video replay and that was not successful. Um, I got my cut, it looks pretty square, I haven't measured it yet. Um, but the press fitted in ring bound up in the blade and pulled itself out. I think what I can do is press fit another one in. At least I hope I can. If not, I have this guy here. Um, all right. Looking at this more closely, this is not quite usable. That cut got pulled out. It is not straight. Oh well. I did like to look at the thinner sides here, but maybe I can do that to this. You know, I could uh, hold this in the mill and just uh, mill the sides down and then make a new pin. I think that's what I'm going to do. Been thinking about it a little more. Um, I think one of the reasons why this came out as well as it did was I wasn't videoing myself and I wasn't in a rush. I started this earlier in the week and I took my time and I remade parts as I wanted to. Um, this guy is a nice idea, but I find that when I'm videoing myself, I want to rush. Um, I think I get this sort of expectation of watching other people on YouTube and that um, you ignore the fact that they've edited everything, plus that they have a lot more experience than I do, and you think that everything turns out really quickly. So I'm not going to mess with this piece. Um, I'll have a think and see if there's a way I can clean this up and get it to be usable. Um, but it's Saturday today. The baby is halfway into his afternoon nap, and so I'm going to be back at the house in an hour. Um, I don't have much time between now and Valentine's Day. I've got some other things I want to do to this before I call it done. Um, so I'll try a little bit more on this side, but I'll leave that as a backup. Okay, I've had a bit of a think, and I'm going to re-bore this spare block out um, to press fit in that brass. Good enough for me. Um, I don't know if you can see what I was doing, but um, basically I'm turning here to find the low point, um, the point where the indicator is closest in. I do that on each side and make sure the readings are the same. Obviously the indicator is coming in at an angle, it's not centered, so if this was perfectly on center, um, that low point would be right here, but it's fine as long as it's this guy's not moving. You just dial in to get the same reading on parallel sides, and this thing should be square. Uh, sanity check by bringing in my center and just seeing how it lines up. 
Now, these lines that I scribed were, you know, close, but they weren't super close, but that looks pretty good. So you probably just saw me do a bunch of futzing um, around trying to get this thing dialed into centre. I was drilling in and sort of taking measurements and checking that the sides were the same and they weren't and I was sort of chalking it up to measurement error. Of course I was measuring upside down with calipers um, and yeah there's some feel to it but if you can't see the numbers you can't get a sense of whether you've got this at the right angle. So. I, Turned the camera off, moved everything away, and took measurements, and got everything much tighter. Um, bored out the hole. I'm shooting for, so it is a one and a quarter inch pipe that we're going to be press fitting in there. Um, I think with brass and aluminium and this thin wall, um, like a 10 thou press fit. Maybe seven, something like that. Um, I think right now we're at 1.23, 1.25 would be exact fit. So, oops, see it just moved when I pulled it out, but that was at 1.23. So, uh, it's hard to, anyway. Um, I think another 10 thou, which is 5 thou on the dial, should get us pretty close. One point two four. It should be one point two four everywhere. I'm just doing this to double check measurement error, which as you can see is Couple of thou. Of course, the boring bar is in my way. Yeah, 1.24. That's what I said I was going for, but I'm going to do a little bit more. One point two four five. I think I'm going to call that a five thou press fit interference fit. Um, it's hitting the bottom of the tool holder or the mount. I should. Trim that off, but I will just do a small relief. All right, that relief should be enough. In. Okay, we're going to set up to press this in.
Keep her in. Yep, bottom there at the bottom of the hall. And I'll let this hole a little bit off to face off. Um, I might just face this off in the mill. Doing this in the mill rather than the lathe because I've got the uh, three jaw set up in the lathe because I have to face off that brass ring and uh, give it a bit of a chamfer. And I didn't want to put the four jaw back on. All right, we are definitely below that little leaf cut. We are back in the four jaw. Luckily, I don't have to chase my tail too much. Um, this doesn't need to be perfectly on center. Um, am eyeballing the cut location. I did a scribe line and I have the tiniest amount of clearance, but that's all you need, right? Okay, so next up is drilling the hole in here, but before I do that, there are some burrs from the facing operations. Um, and so yeah, I'm gonna sand those off. This will be exciting, compelling YouTube content. The lathe is looking a lot cleaner than the last time I showed it to you. Um, I was doing some turning off camera and it was sounding a little funky. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna give this guy a clean, clean everything up, clean the ways, um, replaced, or not replaced, all, I did replace all the gear fluid in the change gear gearbox, re-oiled everything, re-greased the external gears at the back. And it's sounding great again, and it's nice to have a clean lathe. Uh, so off camera, I finished off the, the, the smaller version. Uh, well, most of it. Uh, I think last time I showed you, I'd had this piece done. I've polished that. Uh, I've drilled a hole in the top. I don't know if that's going to be in focus. Finish this guy. Drill the hole in the top of that. I held this guy um, and the full piece of pipe wherever it is uh, in the jaws, and then drilled it. Then parted it. Uh, in this first one, I parted it, then drilled it, um, and being so thin. It deformed a little bit, which is why it's not sitting in the center. Um, so I'm getting close to finishing this smaller guy. Um, I still need to make the steel pin that goes in the top here that joins these two together and that is where the necklace attaches. But now that I've got these two sort of side by side, um, I'll bring you in for a closer shot. Um, I'm kind of liking the look more of the big one. Um, still TBD on this. Uh, I'm going to make the steel pin and then decide which one I'm going to move forward with with the rest of the uh, project. Okay, I've got um, a quarter inch piece of stainless chucked up in my three jaw chuck. Um, I need to basically make this end here thinner. Uh, good thing I've got it in a lathe, it's very good at doing that. Um, I'm shooting for 68,000 uh, diameter here, a length of, what are my numbers, 230. Um, so that'll be the piece that goes through, um, I'll show you on the large one. That will be the piece that, uh, it's a press fit, so it's tight. Um, anyway, the 230 is going to be the piece going through here at 300 in this piece. 
um, and then the end that sticks out there is going to be 150, and then I'm going to drill a 75 thou hole through it. Um, so let's start doing this. Start by facing off. Right, so now I've established my zero. Um, you can't see it, but I've got a little dial test indicator up here against the carriage so I can measure my travel. I will zero that. Right, we are zeroed. Now I'm going to do a skim cut on the outside to establish my zero out here. So we're at 170 thou. So I'm going to take off a fraction over 110 thou, or 100 thou and 102 thou, sorry. So I'll do, hmm, I had some backlash. Heat that up, all right. I'll do a 20 thou pass, should take 40 off the diameter. Sort of 92-ish at the back, uh, at the front here, 91-ish there, so I'm getting a little bit of deflection. Um, I have an undergraduate math major, graduate studies in statistics and whatnot. I also have a calculator. I am horrible at mental arithmetic, and while it's good practice, I don't like making mistakes. So 92, want to be at 68, so that's a difference of 24, and so divide that by 2 to go from uh, diameter to radius, that's 12 thou I've got to take off. I'm going to take it all off in one pass, and uh, see how that goes. Yeah, I can see where it's... Uh, expanding out at the end from um, deflection. I do actually own micrometers, but unfortunately I made the mistake of going all out and buying digital ones and the batteries are all dead. All right, we're 68.5, or 68 on the money at the back. I wish you could see this. Um, but at the front, we are at 69 and a half, 70 thou with a little burr here. But that's okay. Um, I'm going to do a little chamfer to get this guy started more easily. That should take that off. And um, will I chamfer it or will I file it? I'm going to file it. Right. Yeah, so it's a press fit at the end, which is good. It gets narrow at the back, so it slides back there, but it only needs to hold on to the tip, and that'll be fine. So I'm going to call that good. Next, I want to go back 150 from here and turn it to a diameter of 150. So I should still have all of my dials in the right spot. <laughs> 149. All right, that's good enough for me. 
Let's part this guy off. Although, before parting it, I probably want to drill it, and then I'll part it. through. Okay, have everything up in the uh, chuck, um, sorry, in the lathe. I rehoned the parting blade. Um, I'm glad I cleaned the lathe because the chances, the risk of losing this part is pretty high. And uh, I've got my dial test zeroed with the blade pressed up against the shoulder there, not pressed up hopefully to the point that it's deflecting. I know I'm still fighting a little bit. Right, so. Zero. And bring it back. And I believe this is, what? 62,000. Call it 65 to give us some clearance, uh, the width of the parting blade. So we move back to our reading 65 and lock the X, lock the carriage, <coughs> and pray that it doesn't break in the wrong spot. I said it was a 62 blade and I went back 65 for reasons. So we have a little top hat. So I'll have to clean that up. I have to clean up this part in general, but it didn't break. So I ended up using the uh, mill as a lathe because I couldn't chuck up that part in the lathe. Um, to get rid of the little pip on the end. So this second one is pretty much complete. I'm torn as to which one is my favorite. Um, this one here, I think I like more maybe. I think that's also gonna take it into a high level of polish. I can always do that to that one. Um, just a quick point, the little pips you see sticking out there, they're actually intentional, believe it or not. Um, and that's because my plan is to fill these central rings with epoxy and embed some plants in there. And the little pip um, sticking out, my theory is that the epoxy will hold onto that and hold everything together. Um, I'm working on a lot of theories when it comes to epoxy. Um, I'm pretty nervous about this next step. I think one of the reasons why I made this complete second one um, was to avoid the epoxy phase. Uh, yeah, there was definitely some things I didn't like about this one, and they're improved on this one. Um, but working with epoxy scares me. Let me go take you over to the epoxy and show you what I've been doing over there. <laughs> 